Welcome, boys and girls, to another episode of Blazing Tape, the number one episode here in the sim world. Uh, I am Rick Blazing, of course. Uh, my main man is here, Seas. Seas, how we doing, brother? We're doing good. Monday, Yell's favorite day of the week. It's a beautiful day to talk some sim world, and we got the soft commit period started here, Rick, so we, we got a lot yeah. to talk about. Yeah, there is a lot to talk about, Siege. A whole lot to talk about with the with the soft. This is what I call the engagement. This is the engagement time. Uh, which engagement are you most surprised about so far? I think for me, it, it it's got to be. I mean, it's not it's not Renzo to Queen City. I think we all saw that one kind of coming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think for me, it's it's got to be Benari to to Heartland. I, I didn't really see that one coming. I know there was talks about him with Lakeshore Drive, so maybe it makes sense. You know, Coach Loveless went over there to, to take over with Heartland, and maybe Benari and him had that kind of connection already, so he went over there. But I, I really didn't see that one coming. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I didn't see that coming. but I, That's my surprise, but for a totally different reason. Um, You got <laughs> a coach uh, who was very vocal <laughs> and doesn't make many friends, seems like. And you have a player who has the same attribute, very vocal. It don't seem to make very many friends. This is going to be the most interesting team for me to watch all of this upcoming season because I can see this. This is going to be must watch TV. This is going to be must watch TV. I promise. The, with just these two guys, it's going to be enough for me to be glued into my seat or on my phone every single time these guys are having a game. Oh, don't have a business. Don't let them start losing. I wish I could be a fly on the wall during the game <laughs> in the huddle with Bernard James and Coach Loveless. I think this is going to be a, an exciting time. Is it going to equate to wins? I have no earthly idea, but it will be exciting nevertheless. It is a ticking time bomb ready to explode, and I'm here for it all. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel the same way. I, I'm kind of thinking it could be a good thing for both Coach Loveless and Bernard because we know one thing about Heartland. Those fans are outspoken. Those fans are rowdy. They're yep. diehard fans. That atmosphere is something crazy. And they might appreciate a player and a coach who kind of operate that way, who are kind of going to be out there and, and talking their stuff and all that. And I think specifically for Benari, I think it's going to be good to have a fan base who's going to be ride or die for a guy like him, who's going to support him true. regardless. No matter how many shots he put up, you know, one game he might be four for 20, but another one he might be 16 for 20. And those Heartland Zombie Stars fans are gonna they're gonna ride with him regardless. They're gonna hype him up. Uh, I think it's gonna be really good for Benari. Um, the coach, I don't know. As long as he's not getting into it with the owner, as long as uh, they've established <laughs> a decent working relationship, I think they'll be fine. But that's definitely my big surprise of the day so far. Um, you know, Arthur Lattimore going to to Lone Star. You know, he's going home. Um, I think that's a great one. It's a little bit of a surprise. I kind of thought maybe he would go back to Cascadia, but I good for him. Um, but yeah, Benari, Benari to Heartland is going to be really interesting to watch. Very interesting. Speaking of a Lone Star, and let's move to our next topic. Uh, do you think, uh, Lone Star self-committed with King Arthur, got a self-commitment also from, uh, what's the other gentleman self-committed from, uh, to Lone Star? Ronnie, Ronnie Shanahan. From yeah, Bay Ronnie Area. Shanahan. That's a big, uh, Ronnie Shanahan's involved, formerly of Bay Area. Do you think, with, with what's going on with the soft commitments that Coach Woods has right now with Lone Star, can they be a top five team next season? Do you think they can be a top five team, not in just their region, a top five team in Sin World next season? I kind of, I kind of do think they can be, and I'll tell you what. First of all, I'll say this: the Pope brothers, that coach Cascadia and Bay oh my Area, God. they're looking oh my at Coach Woods right now. Like, who else are you gonna take? Like, what's what's up? Who else are you going yeah, to he got, yeah, he got, they got a mark, they got his name marked on the calendar for, for sure. They, they definitely do. And I'll tell you what, obviously Arthur Lattimore, we both agree, he's more than likely the best player in Sim World coming into the season this year. Um, Ronnie Shanahan, he, he doesn't quite have that star power, but what he was, he was a great role player for Bay Area. He came off the bench, he did his thing. Um, I think they need some guys like that around Arthur. You don't, you don't want to load it up too much with, with star power. They got that commit from Mar Don recently, that soft commit. Um, Anyways, that was the rumor that he had he had accepted that offer, but we'll see if that you know just the engagement period. So we'll see. But I I like it for them. I think Arthur Lattimore immediately put the team in the conversation for top ten team, uh, no matter what. But I think when you also factor in they're bringing back Mason Green, 
who's a great defensive big. He lived in Derek Long's shadow a little bit last year, but he should progress, be a great defender at the five next to Lattimore. They're bringing back Meany Gibson, who I think is an underrated scorer, playing next to Jace McGez last year, also yeah. kind of lives in his shadow. But I think yeah. he's nice. He's nice with it, and they're bringing in the right role players with Ronnie Shanahan and those kind of guys. So I like what they're doing. Do I think they for sure will be a top t- top five team? I don't know. Do they have the potential to be if Coach Woods can put it all together correct? They definitely do. I- I'm with you. I'm not sure they're top five either. Uh, I think they do. It gets into the top ten conversation. Uh, and I- I'm going to say they're in the top five because I don't know what Coach Woods. I don't know what his, I don't know what he's going to do. You know, it's one thing to collect to have talent. It's another thing to get the talent to work together in a game plan that works seamlessly with the talent to get a very good result. That part, the jury's still out on Coach Woods on that. So I don't, I don't know. So my yeah. the biggest question mark I got coming into the, the the season with Longstar is not the players, it's actually the coach. I want to see what he can do, what can he bring, uh, what kind of philosophy he's going to have, and how he's going to shape and mold this team, which is looking like a, a fresh team, a new team at this point. How he's going to shape and mold his team to get the most out of the talent that he's acquired. So my question mark is on Coach Woods. Hey, if Coach Woods can do his thing, the talent is already there. They can easily be a top five team. If Coach Woods don't do his thing, the talent is still good enough. They probably will still just end up in the top ten regardless. But we'll see. I think Coach Woods is the X factor, X factor for this team. I hope – and I'll say this. I hope it goes fantastic. And I'm, I'm looking at the other side of Texas, the city. I'm from Houston. I'm looking at Coach Ballard like, yo, bro, what are we doing? <laughs> what we got cooking? Now, I know you got almighty soul. That's cute. I like that. But, man, hey, Lone Star. He is put, almighty. He is almighty. He is That's almighty, but he can't play five positions at one time. No, no. he. I don't think so. Don't yeah, think so, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, almighty going to need to get some all assistance. We need some more help. Uh, so, because like you said, like the last show we had, I want this Lone Star H-Town rivalry to be about something. I want it to be phenomenal. Uh, me As a Texan, I want that Lone Star H-Town to be just – Explosion, but you gotta have a player. You gotta have a player to kind of get it there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, so I'm, look, at least at the very least, you know, Lone Star just added Arthur Lattimore. At least in theory, we'll see when the marriage comes. Uh, but I mean, Houston's bringing back Tyrell Thompson, and that's that's a strong four right there. He was a great he's score a last year. He, he's big, strong. Him and Arthur going at it are gonna be fun. Now, yeah, on paper, obviously, and on the court, Arthur has the leg up on that one. Uh, unless Tyrell Thompson takes a massive leap. But, hey, he was all sim world last year. He's a big 6'8", beefy guy. Like, yeah. they're going to have some battles. That's, they're going to have some battles. That's cute. But that's, that's not really moving the needle for me. I'll be honest with you. That's cute. Uh, they need more. They need I'm, not, more I'm, not, sure. I'm not arguing Tyrell's talent. But that's not really not. When you say Tyrell Thompson, I don't get any tingling in my spine. That's not moving <laughs> the needle for me. Now, you t- you get K, K- killing or Kai killing. All right, I got a tingle right there. I, I feel a little tingle. You got it. If H-Town can add Kai, <laughs> that's big. That's big. You see what I'm saying? I need yeah, some yeah. tingling in my toes. Tingle, tingle. We're going to call this show. I don't know what we're going to call it, but tingling. I don't. You're tingling, baby. You're tingling, baby. That's the name of the episode. I don't know if it's officially going to be named this, but this is what I'm saying on air. You're tingling, baby. Because I need some tingling in my toes from H-Town so we can make this H-Town and Lone Star rivalry legit. I wanted to rival... Who I think is the best rival right now in Sim World of uh, Prep, which is um, Showtime and Best and Bay Area, who's still loading up, by the way. Bay Area is loading the F up. Speaking of Bay Area loading the F up, the Jamie Ramos situation. I was a bit surprised. I'll I be honest with you. Surprised. I was a bit surprised. I, 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 I thought Ramos was going to commit to a team where it could just be his team. He has my options I, I, look, in, the, in that West that, Coast. But, but we saw all, all off season that Trey Hyman and Jamie Ramos were True. obviously building this this chemistry, this friendship. Correct. So, so look, if he was going to go anywhere, this was the least surprising of the teams that already had a built in roster. You know, and, so I'm and you know what? I'm hoping and, they find a way to use them because I don't think they used. I don't think Coach Pope, and all respect to Coach Pope, great coach. I think Royce Anderson specifically was misutilized last year. Um. I don't think he was maybe utilizing the right way, but that it was a loaded roster. I just don't want to see the same thing happen to Jamie Ramos. I know my guy Jeff on Facebook was down there beefing with some coaches as he does, and he brought up that point to Trey directly. 
He said, I just don't want to see Jamie Ramos be misutilized. And I, 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 usually don't, call? I, I usually, it's not Trey's call. And I usually do not agree with internet trolls. They, they annoy me. They just there to fire up coaches. I know, I know that guy specifically gets under coach Lasser's skin a lot too. He makes one of them for the, the starting spots, but he does have a point and I, I just don't want to see Jamie Ramos underutilized. So here's the facts. These are, these are the facts. I'm facts over feelings. Somebody on that bay, everything will get a shot another stick. That's just the way it works. Yep. That's just the way it's going to work. And then now you see a Pope is coming back. Somebody is yeah. only one basketball. It's only 32 minutes. Somebody getting a shot another stick, daddy. That's just the way it's going to work. And I think it's going to be Jamie Ramos. Now, I, I, I assume Coach Pope told Ramos, Ramos this. Hey, you're going to be, you're going to learn. You're going to, you're going to be on a good team. We got great players around us. And then you're going to be the sec- you're going to be third, fourth, fifth guy option. And then next season is going to be your team because these all all these guys are going to college after this. So I I I, I think my assumption I haven't talked to Coach Pope. My assumption is that's what he sold Ramos on. So that's why it's such a big shock to me because Ramos uh, is going to get a short end of the stick, but he gets a chance to learn uh, from a really good team in a really good uh, situation, and he gets to be the man of the team next season, assuming that he stays. Uh, with Beth, with Bay Area at the end of this year, but it is a big shocking. There was a big shocking. There was some other positions, some other uh, teams uh, that could have just been a Jamie Ramos team. I would have liked to see him go, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get out of here with our pick and roll segment before we before we let the people go. Pick and roll segment is very simple. I pick a topic, and then my man Siege, who is not aware of the topic, has to roll with it and give me an answer on these topics. Really, really simple. One of my favorite, uh, des- I'm a dessert guy. I'm a dessert guy to my core. What do you put? What are you putting? What topics are you putting on your ice cream? All right. Well, look, I'm a big fan of like a caramel Oreo ice cream, which doesn't really need a whole lot of topping. But if I'm going something plain that has nothing in it like that, I like to get, I like to get some Oreos in there, some chunks of Oreos in there, some caramel. Okay. That that's really my go to. Um I need some caramel on that. I'm I'm sometimes a sprinkles guy. Sometimes I'll get some sprinkles. If I'm in the mood, but they're not a they're not a <laughs> they're not a staple for me. I have had sprinkles since I was eight. And that makes they sense. Okay, so you caramel, Oreo and sprinkles. Yeah, yeah. I like that's not that's, I mean I probably will hold the sprinkles, but I I I'm I'm cool with that. I like Person, especially if I'm at home making it at the house, I like Magic Shell. I'm a big Magic oh, Shell guy. Yes. For those who don't know, Magic Shell is like a um, a chocolate uh, syrup, but it hardens. Uh, I'm sure there's probably like a, a pause moment in something that I'm saying. I'm sure. So we're gonna just leave it to the we'll leave it to the pause guys to do that. Uh, <laughs> but it, it after about 60 seconds or so, it becomes uh, uh, like a crust, like a shell. Um, so I like that. I'm, I'm with that. That's that's my thing if I'm at the house. Uh, but yeah, yeah, okay. Sprinkles and all, I, I'm I'm cool with the Oreo, cool with the caramel. Um, yeah, all that's good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we on the road as you can tell. We check out these recruits. We check out these next spots. I can't wait to see and to hear about what engagement we're gonna be hearing about next. Guys, get the uh, coach to get your rings out. Make sure you got the fitted just right with these players. So when you say, will you, they can simply say, I do. And we out.